everyone, and welome to the OHSAA D2 Finals from the Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. You're watching this broadcast sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. The hurdles are off and running, and we're watching number seven, lane seven, Kylie Adams of Bell Fountain. But wow, look at the runner in lane four. Julia Lorazente Hubner of Marlington Highland. Jennifer, she came into the 14 1 3. No doubt about it. Held form absolutely dominant, and she's excited, rightfully so. Oh, that's exciting to look at her. 13 6 4. She got a time she was going for. What a phenomenal run by that young lady. Guys are getting in the blocks for the boys. 110 meter hurdles. Everyone was pretty excited just a moment ago. The winner in the girls' hurdles ran a 13.64, which would have broken the win record, but it was determined that it was wind aided. You can do a two, and the wind is 2.5. Uh, 2.5, just a little too much. Such a shame. She was absolutely mm. sensational. But uh, the boys hurdles can't feel too bad. She still won the race. That's right. It was quite impressive. And our Kylie Adams from Bell Fountain finished in eighth place. All right, for the boys, our eyes are on lane nine. Owen Wilkins from Liberty Benton. Here are your racers. Marcus Hubanks of Batavia in one. Calvin Spiker of Orville in two. Keith Hopings of Rogers in three. Micah Mitchell of Steubenville in four. Devonte Young of Dunbar in five. Corey Davis of Brookfield in six. Pavel Henderson, Ravenna, seven. Bo Harkle Road, Huron, eight. And Owen Williams. Wilkins of Liberty Benton in nine. It's Micah Mitchell in lane four from Steubenville. Best time in this 13.97. Uh, the senior looks to hold that, that and win it. Uh, Owen Wilkins, our local guy from Liberty Benton. 14.77. The junior looks to surprise some people. Well, we enjoyed a, a fun and exciting Division Three meet earlier today, which we just showed here on our station not long ago. Marion Local Boys winning that uh, that entire meet, Columbus Grove, however, also doing quite well. In fact, we had a lot of local teams placing incredibly well at state. Yeah, how about the Columbus Grove throwers? It's such a great job carrying at that uh, portion of the state title. Just not enough. And the guys from Marion Local, they know a little bit about winning state titles in Marion Local. They did, and they did it in the end. It was the 4x4 four four was the, the race that got it in for them to get that win. If you missed... Our D3 coverage, no worries. I promise you it's going to be on again uh, right here on WSN this week and all throughout the summer. We're going to have a lot of opportunities to watch these great athletes. Excuse me. Owen Wick, Wilkins from uh, Liberty Benton surprised people in his heat yesterday, coming in second, ran his best. If you want to be at your best, this is the time to do it. That's right, and this kind of heat, also impressive that he was able to, to, to achieve that. However, though, as Danny told us yesterday, sprinters pretty much love this kind of weather. Stays loose, keeps those leg muscles nice and easy. Always got to be aware of the hurdles. Every once in a while, that hurdle will jump up and grab your foot. <laughs> is that what's happening? Is that, is, that, is that how it works? Sometimes that happens. A good start by Devante Young of Dunbar. Absolutely. But also in two, Calvin Spiker of Orville. But it's Young of Dunbar paving his way through to a state championship. Impressive run by that young man. 13.95 was his time uh, Jennifer, to get the he, win. He shaved off a lot to win this here today. 14-2-3 coming into this race. Hey, he was at his best at the best time. Our next event is the girls' 100-meter dash. And as those girls get ready, I'll give you an update on where we are with the scores. Marlington Highland is your leader right now with 30 points. Our uh, highest current local team is Bell Fountain, tied for fourth with 12 points. Kenton is in 10th place with nine points. And Ottawa Glandorf, well, Liberty Benton 16th, and Ottawa Glandorf 17th. But of course, we're just at the start of 
the day and a lot of things are going to change. Here's what we have running in lane one, Ava Reeves of Bell Fountain. Lane two, Colette Patty of Johnstown Northridge. Lane three, Jelana Schen Schenkel of Bryan. Lane four, Emma Henry of St. Clairsville. Lane five, Nyla King, Toledo Central Catholic. Lane six, Riley McKittrick, Oak Harbor. Lane seven, Ava Bowman of Shelby. Lane eight, Taylor Schreibner of Toledo Central Catholic. And lane nine, Bryn McKeever of Buckeye Local. Emma Henry in lane four, best time 11-8-1. The junior looks to hold form and win this, but keep an eye on JoJo Shankle. Joanna Shankle likes to go by the name of JoJo from Bryan. A freshman that is going to absolutely obliterate all the records in the NWOAL in her next three years. She is good enough. She could just jump up and win this thing today. Ava Reeves in one from Bell Fountain. Jelena Schlenkel from Bryan in three. But it's looking like Nyla King from Toledo Central Catholic and Emma Henry from St. Clairsville. And that was Nyla King from Toledo Central Catholic. Jennifer, if you ever want to watch a perfect start, put this in and watch it time and time again because Nyla King perfected the start and that propels her to this victory. The freshman from Bryan, she finishes in Needing to see the results come through. I think it's seventh or eighth. Yes, seventh for Brian's Schlenkel. Boys 100 meter dash. We don't have any local competitors in this race, but this is just going to be a great race. So we wanted to give you a little extra 10 seconds of your day to appreciate some incredible running. In lane one is Taysier Tace Williams Clay of Woodridge. Lane two, Devante Young of Dunbar. Three, John P Padoljal of Indian Hill. Four, Solomon King of Toledo Central Catholic. Five, Dwayne Galloway of Marion Franklin. Six, Bryce West of Glenville. Seven, McQuan Gravely of Glenville. Eight, Joe Stupka of Clear Fork, and nine, Hayden Burrow of Oak Harbor. And Jennifer Solomon King from Toledo Central Catholic, the best time, 10.50. The senior looks to make it king and king back to back for Toledo CC. It's going to be close, though. Look how close this is right now, but you're right, Solomon King moving in and moving out. He is your winner in this race. The senior from Toledo Central Catholic gets the win in 10 3 4 is his time. 10 4 2, second place Galloway from Marion Franklin. Hey, we're going to take a break. When we come back, it's time for some relays. You're watching D2 Finals right here on WOSN. Time now for the girls 4 by 200 meter relay. You're watching State Track D2 Final, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Our eyes are on lane five. That's where the ladies from Van Wert are running. They're in the final here of the girls 4 by 2. CVCA is in one, Port Clinton in two, Lexington three, Toledo Central Catholic four with the recent 100 dash Winner, Nyla King is the anchor. Van Wert in five. Gilmore Academy in six. Madeira in seven. Beaumont in eight. And Johnstown Northridge in nine. Now, Jennifer had a chance to visit with the uh -huh. impressive ladies from Van Wert. Lady Cougars told me their goal, win the state title. Didn't shy away from it. Kendra Deering off and going, and she is one fast lady, qualified for state in several individual events. What a great asset she is for her relay. Looking very good on her leg of the 200 right now. She'll be passing off to Macy Johnson. Now look at Macy take off, running her best early once she got the baton. Downtown Northridge looking quite impressive over here in lane nine. Of course, they do have a st furthest stagger, but pretty far out there. But let's go back to Van Wer. That's who we are watching. Lane five getting ready to pass off to the third runner. Oh, I think there's a chance that Van Wert's in the lead. They are it's right now. It's hard to tell by that, that handoff, but that looked like it. Great race right now with Denisha Branson making her way around, getting ready to pass off to the senior, Sophie Haug, who's going to be bringing her team home. Uh, Central Catholic recaptures the lead. Mary Ellis gives it the Lady Irish the lead, but 
Sophie Hogg is going to try and catch the state champ, Nyla King. Nyla King just got done running not long ago. Sophie Haug is fresh for the day, and she knows this is her final race for the four by two. This Van Wert senior is working on it every single step. And it's gonna be a second place finish for Van Wert here at the state meet. Yeah, Sophie Haug just ran out of real estate. Maybe another 20 yards, and she could have caught King, who was laboring. But what an effort by Nyla King, winning the 100 and coming back and doing this in short time. What a great race. 142.06 is Van Wert's time. They are your state runners up in the girls' 4x200-meter relay. Boys' 4x200-meter relay is next. We are watching lane two, Napoleon. But in line one, at South Point, Napoleon in two. Perkins in three. The defending champions are in four. That's Glenville. Lane five, Bucktill. Lane six, Huron. Lane seven, Benedictine. Eight, Steubenville. And nine, Toledo Central Catholic. T TCC, where they were in the girls' race, anchored by a king. Will be anchored by a king in this one as well. Yeah, Solomon King, what a great effort. He had 10-3-4, would have been a new state record, but 2-0-1 was the win. Mm. Aiden said, no, no, he can't have it. Has to be two or below. He is a dynamic runner, as we saw a moment ago. Our guys from Napoleon, a 128.78. The NLO champs look to do some damage here on championship Saturday. You know, the uh, guys from Glenville, you're going to see them just running, but they have been an interesting crew to watch. They have matching uh, matching uniforms, matching warm-ups. They all have these matching um, bucket hats. They walk in a row everywhere they go. The team effect is in effect. Yeah, a little intimidation factor. And they wear those warm-ups no matter how hot it is. All black this year. Last year they had red warm-ups all around the track. The intimidation factor helps them run really fast, too, and that's what Glenville does. Not sure what the pause is. Well, actually, I saw an official stopping someone from walking over towards the pit. Um, so they need complete, you know, complete stillness before they can start. And they are starting. Lane two, Napoleon. Hayes Bingham is the leadoff, according to our list. Passing off to Mason Schweitzer, Brett Bostelman, and Landon Weikers. Actually, I take that back. We've got a whole bunch of names listed on here because they put all their alternates on here. So the top four Napoleon runners are running, and we are certainly cheering them on for the best. Oh, we talked about Glenville, and they are in four. Six is Huron. Out there on the outside in eight is Toledo Central Catholic. Glenville hands off first. Toledo Central Catholic, second on the exchange. Oh, wait a second. Was that Bucktill that handed off first? Or was that? They're so fast, I'm, I'm having trouble keeping up. That's Bookdale with the lead, but it won't be for long as Glenville is eating up some time. We're gonna have a great finish here. This is your opportunity to rush into the top runners in the state. This isn't D1, but man, this is D1 level as these guys are fighting it out for the finish. Glenville in four, the man in all red, pumping his way to the finish line. Huron's gonna go in for the second place spot. Congratulations also to Napoleon over in heat lane two. 126.66 is the time. Hey, that's gonna wrap it up for this segment when we return the first long distance run of the day, the 1600 when we come back. Time now for the girls' 1600 meter run. It's our first long distance run for this D2 final. And here we are watching Kate Thormeyer from Bryan, she's number 14 and Grace Rhodes from Wauseon, number 18. Here are your contestants, Kayla Gonzalez of Shelby, Bella Butler of Oakwood, Amy Weybrecht of Gilmore Academy, Cameron Walker of Unioto, 
Kennedy Schleschman of Huron, Anna Conrad, Fairfield Union, Reese Riemann, Woodridge, Samantha Erbach, Waynesville, Madeline Beegert, CF Northwest, Ruby Gross, Carol, Jaden Towns, Huron, Kayla Chrisman, Minerva, Maddox, Bigham, Circleville, Kate Thormeyer of Bryan, Elsa Holm, Fredericktown, Maggie Hall of Salem, Myla Gresh of Chagrin Falls, and Grace Rhodes of Wasion. Your best time in this field, Bella Butler from Oakwood, 4.5, 2.46. And Samantha Erbach from Waynesville, 458.58. Those are the two young ladies that are sub five in this race. Bella Butler, been a great runner from Oakwood for a long time. Uh, last year, I believe she has finished second in this in the past, if I'm remembering correctly, just off the top of my head. Oakwood, a long standing tradition of great distance runners. Got to give a quick shout out to number 15. That's Elsa Holm. She's rocking some pretty cool uh, socks there. You can't miss her, can you? <laughs> I oh. love seeing a little bit of creativity on the field. Got the same going on. The second place girl up there. I'm sure those are the, uh, the compression socks that actually help with the legs and help with the running. Uh, hot pink ones up there in the third place position up. up near the front. Well, what's the old saying? Uh, look good, feel good, run good. You know that now that you say that, when I think back to when I was running, that's before, I still might run, but not competitively. But when I think back to it, we didn't have cool clothes. It was basically put on a flannel shirt in the winter, a pair of sweatpants, you go. And the best runners never matched. That was the way you knew who the best runner was. That was before you became the fashion plate that you are, Jennifer <laughs> Oh, thanks so much. Miles Holiday, who dips pretty awesome shoes if you want to talk <laughs> about fashion. Well, you know what? Fashion or no fashion, we got a pretty solid runner right there in the front, and she is pacing things away from the pack. Just a little bit under 2.30 top part of this race. Everybody making really good time. Not going to be fighting the sun like we were in the morning. The sun is now drifting away from us behind the press box. Going to start to give some athletes some cover. That's right. We actually suddenly felt a big change, even a temperature change once that happened. We had that overcast skies, which is what was forecasted for this afternoon. Um, pretty hot and sticky this morning, but if we continue to have that wind issue, that could have a factor in some of our running. Miles has his binoculars out, so he can check on those runners who from our vantage point look pretty small from where we are watching. All right, here's the point where the race is brought to start getting interesting. Our first place finisher is strongly in the lead, but what's gonna happen now with second place as we get to this final lap here with these ladies? If you're wondering where our other runners are right now, Kate Thormeyer is crossing right at this moment. She's got one lap to go. We've also got Grace Rhodes from Wasion running. Quick look back there to see just how much space she's got from the finish. Making her way in toward a state championship. Second place is working hard, isn't gonna catch her. Looking at a pretty nice time as well. The pace that herself is quite impressive. Around a 4.49, your first place finisher as these ladies now make their way in for the final parts of the 1600 meter run. Congratulations to Kate Thormeyer from Bryan and Grace Rhodes from Wasion who also are running this race. Now, Bella Butler came in with a 4.52. Looks like she saved some time off. 
to get the 4-4-9 and claim the victory. Waynesville is second in this race. Woodbridge is third in this 1600 meter run. Girls 4x100 Relay, we are back to the State Track D2 Finals. This broadcast is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Van Wert in lane three. These four ladies finished second in the state by the 4x200 not long ago, and they are back for the 4x1. Port Clinton in one, Madeira in two, Van Wert in three, TCC four, Gerard in five, Shelby in six, Oak Harbor in seven, Bucktel in eight, and Gilmore Academy in nine. Well, Van Wert, same group of four. However, they switched spots. Sophie Hogue will leave this one out. Ken Deering is now the closer for them. And I've noticed that's been the the way they've done things all throughout the they season. Have. Sophie has been the anchor in one of the, the races, but the lead off in one of the other ones. That's Toledo Central Catholic with your best time for 8.95. Nyla King, that lady, she's the closer for them. Toledo Central Catholic's Jayla Watson getting things off quite quickly already. That first one to hand off to Macy Johnson, I'm sorry, Taylor Schreibner. It's Macy Johnson for Van Wert who has the baton and is making her way down the back stress, getting ready to hand off to Denisha Branson. Boy, look at Toledo Central Catholic taking off. And here comes Nyla King. We've already seen her a couple times. She is cooking her way toward the end. Well, Gerard Catcher, that is triplet. Van Wert right now in third. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And Nyla King gets the win for Toledo Central Catholic, but takes a tumble. Look at the sportsmanship. Everybody immediately goes there to see if she's okay. 48.21, so they beat Gerard by .05. Van Wert gets third place with a 48.79. Nyla King has already got two gold medals. This is her third one, limping off the track as she makes her way to the side. I'm with the Van Wert girls and they are second place finishers in the four by two, third place in the four by one. And I'm going to ask you guys your first and last names and what grade you're in. Um, I'm Kendra Deering and I'm a sophomore. I'm Macy Johnson and I'm a junior. I'm Sophie Haug and I'm a senior. I'm Denisha Branson and I'm a senior. So two, not just podium finishes, top three finishes on the day and it's early. What goes through your mind being able to accomplish two feats like that? You know, this is a surreal feeling. I think we're all just kind of in shock a little bit. Um, just at the beginning of the season, our four by one wasn't even established. We were not, we were thrown together at a little try meet um, and it worked out. Um, and so it's a really cool feeling knowing that, you know, putting all of us together and our talents um, and it worked out and it was a lot of fun. So what kind of work goes into being able to not only run one relay, but turn right around and run another. Yeah, so the most important thing to us is recovery, whether that's a shakeout run, whether that's, you know, doing a little cool down series and then a warm up series. Um, it's really important to us to get some hydration in there. Just from going in between those events really quickly, is, it, that's important. And you said this group got kind of thrown together. How would you describe the chemistry with you guys now that you've come all this way yeah so being here last year together with our just our four by two that really like started a, that lit a fire inside all of us I think um, and just it just made it even more special to be able to come back together this year um, and even more events and it's been a lot of fun all right thank you ladies and congratulations thank you boys four by 100 meter relay lane one Napoleon that's the team we are watching lane two Shamanan Julian lane three Hawken lane four Eastmore Academy lane five Toledo Central Catholic lane six Glenville lane seven Gerard lane eight Brookville and lane nine Galleon uh, it looks like it's gonna be a battle between Glenville and Toledo Central Catholic those two teams with fantastic times virtual t a lock 4261 for Glenville, 4267 Toledo Central Catholic. Our guys from Napoleon, 
believe it's Eli Snopley going to start it for Napoleon. And Jennifer, if he gets the lead, he should hang on. Hang on, Snopley, Snopley, hang on. No words after that from Miles. Just fast, fast running. Napoleon off to a good start there. But you're right about lanes five and six, Lido Central Catholic and Glenville, <laughs> just fun to watch, really. <laughs> They are absolutely elite level oh, stuff man, right there. Look at Solomon King. You can just tell by the by his his demeanor and know who it is when he's running. He almost ran up into this next runner. He's so fast. Oh, they are just eating up the track, running angry. And that's Lido Central Catholic in five, Glenville in six. That's going to be your finishers, one, two. Napoleon finishes in ninth. Time now for the girls' 400-meter dash, and that means we're going to watch Alexa Fortman, last year's champion, make her way around the track right about now. She is in lane four from OG. Josie Goodson from Union Local in one, Ashley Yance from Fenwick in two, Leela Metris of Hawken in three, Fortman in four, Reagan Campbell of Licking Valley in five, Mary Ellis of Toledo Central Catholic in six, Jessica Church from John Glenn in seven, Deja Washington from Beaumont in eight, and Sandra King from Bucktel in nine. Now, Fortman with the time of five, 6.65. Not the best time coming in though. That's uh, Layla Metris from Hawken, a 5.7.62. Actually, no, no, no. Don't mean to be interrupting you, sure. but 5.665 is better than 5.7.02. I misread it. Lex has got that strong stride and strong arms going as she makes her way on the back stretch, making up, just about making up the first stagger here. Mary Ellison from Cleveland Central Catholic, you mentioned her, uh, 5725. She is running pretty strong there in lane six. But it is Fortman who did have the best time. Champion a year ago, the Terminator, one of the most impressive track athletes I've had the ability to cover. Now, a lot of people have heard a lot about Alexa Fortman because Watch she's go. had so much press on her, and she is getting some competition here as she makes her way into the final. But she's going to do it. Back-to-back -back champion, Alexa Fortman. Congratulations on that win. Let's see what her time is as we wait for the final. 56-21 is her time. 56-21 is the winning time here in D2. 56-43 was the second place time for Campbell, and Hawken gets third place. Boys 400 meter dash, and our eyes are on lane nine, Kaysen Doolittle from Liberty Benton. The other runners are lane one, Colby Humbert, Wycliffe. Two, Owen Miller, Oak Harbor. Three, Kai McKeever, Buckeye Local. Four, Mason Lewis, Bexley. Five, Joe Stupka, Clear Fork. Six, Micah Schuster, Streetsboro. Seven, Malik Davis, Glenville. Eight, Jeffrey Jamison, Holy Name. And nine, Kaysen Doolittle, Liberty Benton. Your best time in this, Mason Lewis from Bexley, 4.792 in lane four. Kaysen Doolittle from Liberty Benton, 50.98. What a year it's been for Kaysen Doolittle, tremendous football player. Young man could really kick the football. Really fun way to finish his high school season too, right down here at the state track. Doolittle got off to a good start, kind of fading here now. This is the toughest part of this race, really, this back 200, where you really got to get the grit and go. But man, take a look at lane four, Mason Lewis of Bexley. We talked about him yesterday. He is strong and he's going muscles all over arms and legs. He's going to be your state champion. Mason Lewis is grimacing, but he'll be smiling now as he captures the state title. Congratulations to Casey Doolittle. He finishes in eighth place, which means he makes the podium and all Ohio status.
This is the final of the girls seated 400. In lane one, we have Hosteller. Lane two, Albers. Lane three, Knowles. Lane four, Herring. Lane five, Soby. Lane six, Hen. Lane seven, McKnight. Lane eight, Arcy. Arcy. And lane nine, Mendenhall. Jessica Albers in lane two is from Fort Loramie. An absolute grueling race, Jennifer, because you cannot take any time to pause. Those arms, shoulders, and lower back will be burning by the end of this one. That's right. And they this is really a sprint. So this is just ongoing, all out, as hard as you can go for the entire lap around. Albers from Fort Loramie is in lane two. Looking pretty, uh, looking pretty solid here as well. So tough to navigate the turns versus straightaway, much easier. Don't want to take any time to pause and coast. Your leader is Herring in lane four. Megan Herring from Lexington. Lane five in second place right now is Milena Sobe from Streetsboro. But look what's happening in lane six. That's Esther Faith Hen moving her way into the second place spot. So that's Herring in first place and Hen in second. Here comes Albers, Albers from Fort Loramie is going to finish in fourth. I'm here at Fort Loramie's Jessica Albers just placing fourth in the sitting 400 and you've podiumed multiple times throughout your career. What's it like to be able to have so put in so much work and be able to show for it every year. It's awesome. I just love I love being on the podium. It's one of the best feelings in the entire world. And so what do you take from your career, such a unique event and being on such a big stage? I just take every opportunity I can get and I just take it and I try to do my best and just go for it. Just try to get the gold medal. All right, thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. We've got three contestants in the boys 400 meter seated dash. They are Connor Hunt in lane four, Garfield. Lane five, Max Carter of Midview. And lane six, Tate Ratliff. He is from Green. Four, five, and six, we've got two freshmen and one senior. Their top freshman time, top time, 103.81 with Connor Hunt. A Hunt and Carter wasted no time sprinting out of the block, and they are flying on that back stretch. He really is. Look at Hunt making his way around. Uh, lots of energy. It's been fun to watch the seated races grow over the years here at the state meet. So much to the fact that we actually had girls prelims yesterday, which is really exciting. I love seeing this increase. You know, this is not an easy thing because you can't just go get any wheelchair. This is a specialized wheelchair that they've got to have for this type of thing. The endurance, absolutely impressive. I don't think he took his hand off the wheel the whole time. 103.19 is the winning time for Hunt. Carter comes in second. Ratcliffe's making his way around for third place in the boys seated. Coming up next is the girls 300 meter hurdles. You're watching the D2 State Track Final sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts seamless spouting. When we return on the track, we'll have Kylie Adams from Bell Fountain in the hurdles. Then we'll have Liberty Benton's Owen Wilkins in the boys' hurdles. And then after that, Alexa Fortman and Corinne Clausen from Ottawa Glendorf are back for the 800. We're back now with the girls 300 meter hurdles. And our eyes are on lane one, Kylie Adams from Bell Fountain. Lane two is Claire Schreiner of Sheridan. Three is Leah Samuels of Dayton Northridge. Four, Isabel Evans, Johnstown Northridge. Five, Anna Rur of Woodridge. Six, Odessa Smith of Morgan. Seven, Claire Durkee of Kid Catholic. Eight, Stacia Hall of Lakeview. And nine, Jayla Watson of Toledo Central Catholic. Evans in your lane four is your best time, 44.89. Looks to be challenged in lane five, Anna Rur. 
from Woodridge, 4-4-9-3. Kylie Adams, our lady from Bell Fountain with a 4-6-4-7. Four, four, the super sophomore. We'll probably see her back again the next couple of years. She is uh, quite the hurdler. Isabel Evans in four finished third place last year. And Aurora of Woodwich, who's in lane five, finished second place last year. Isabel Evans, she's off and going already. You can see her on a mission getting over those hurdles. Yeah, she was the first one to clear the first hurdle and glides over top, wastes no time, snaps back down and continues to run. Kylie Adams from Vail Fountain is out there in the red, doing quite a good job well as well. The sophomore, a little bit of a stutter there on that last hurdle, only two more to go. Now here it comes down to the two ladies that we said it would be. Lane four gets it, Isabel Evans, Johnstown Northridge. She is your state champion. It came down to the last couple hurdles, got in the way, and it might have affected the outcome, but it's going to be Roar that gets the win over Evans. 43.66 is the top time. Bell Fountain's Adams ends up in fourth place. She got in there at the last bit, made her way up. Quite impressive run for her. I'm here with Kylie Adams of Bell Fountain your fourth place finisher in the girls 300 hurdles. Just talk to me about what it's like being able to come away with a fourth place finish on the day. Oh, it's amazing, honestly. I've been training all season for this and having four events on this hot day, it kind of took, took away a little bit from what I knew I could do, but fourth place is still amazing for me. So for you to prepare for the day, I mean, you're in one of the outer lanes. What kind of got you motivated coming into the day to tell yourself, not only am I going to podium, of course, but I'm, I'm going to try and go for it? Well, honestly, I had nothing to lose. I'm only a sophomore, so it was really just get out and go, go for it. And how do you think this finish is going to motivate you going into the next couple years? Oh, yeah. Me and Isabel, Isabel finished second. We're both sophomores, so it'll be me and her for the rest of, the rest of our two years together. So who knows? We'll see. All right, congrats, and thank you so much. Boys 300 meter hurdles. We're watching lane three. Owen Wilkins from Liberty Benton. The other runners are Wyatt Augsburger of Oak Harbor, Calvin Speicher of Oroville, Wilkins from Liberty Benton in three, Bo Harkle Road of Huron in four, and Micah Mitchell of Steubenville in five, Braden Richards of Perry, not the Lima Perry, Maslin Perry rather, in six, Nick Bengala of Girard in seven, and Eli Mora of Delta in eight. Yeah, Bo Harkle Road of uh, Huron, best time, 38.83. Owen Wilkins, though, he is peaking at the right time from Liberty Benton. 3921 was fantastic yesterday. Looks like that was Micah Mitchell from Steubenville who made it over the hurdle first and the second one first as well and the third one first as well. We can definitely say he is our clear leader in the moment. A little bit of race. a stumble over that last hurdle, but he is still holding close to the lead. It's going to be a battle here between five and six. Micah Mitchell and Braden Richards. Oh, oh. How things can change with just one little stumble. Looks like Owen Wilkins finishing in, I believe, fifth place. We'll have to check that out. Heartbreak for, for uh, Steubenville's runner as he... Yeah, Mitchell, it looked like he was going to win it, just stumbled a little bit. Allowed Bo Harkle Road to get back in it. I think he is going to come in the second with Richards getting first. And Wilkins from Liberty Benton finishes in sixth. When we return, it's time to head to the 800-meter run, and that means Alexa Fortman from Ottawa Glandorf and Corinne Clausen, also from Ottawa Glandorf, will be on your TV blazing around the track. You're watching State Track Division Two at OHSAA State Meet at Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium right here on WOSN. It's time now for a pinnacle race for the OG Titans. Alexa Fortman in lane two and Corinne Clausen, actually not lane two, number two, and Corinne Clausen, 15, are going to be running in this 
race. Of course, Alexa Portman is the defending state champion from last year. Just repeated her win in the 400 just moments ago, literally, pretty much 20 minutes ago. Yeah, something she accomplished a year ago, back-to-back -back state titles within 20 minutes, and celebrated her birthday all on the same That's day. Right. What an last amazing day that was, was for her birthday, Alexa Fortman. Obviously means her birthday's coming up very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Fortman with a time of 2-1-3.48 best in this. Uh, challenged by her teammate, Corn Kloss, with a 2 one 6 3 9. Those ladies from OG, they like to run fast around this track twice. Marissa Boone from Woodridge, also a fast time of 2 one 3 one That's right, we've got 18 ladies here. Forgot to mention, we are also watching lane 18, Maria Judy from St. Mary's Memorial. So we've got two ladies from OG, and then we've got a runner from St. Mary's. Here is the lineup. Marissa Boone of Woodridge, Alexa Fortman, Ottawa Glendorf, Anna Conrad, Fairfield Union, Elena Weaver, Lexington, Amy Weybrecht, Gilmore Academy, Jaden Towns of Huron, Caitlin Shipley of Westfall, Samantha Erbach of Waynesville, Reese Riemann of Woodridge, Mary Souther of Zane Trace, Kennedy Schlesman of Huron, Kate Leroy of Madeira, Jalen Williams of Hillsborough, Maggie Hall of Salem, Corinne Clausen of Ottawa Glendorf, Shannon Cundiff, Shelby, Katie Walton of Valley View, and Maria Judy of St. Mary's. Now you see Fortman, she's not wasting any time, Jennifer. She's trying to get out in front early. She is, and that's how she likes to do it. She's got the pink, the pink, uh, spack trikes, <laughs> splack trikes, track spikes. And she is up there near the front which is a lot of what we saw last year at this time. She got out, she got going right from the start, and she had one other contender with her last year, fighting her all the way to the end. And we see right here, two ladies are leading the way, Woodbridge and Ottawa Glandorf. Those are your top two runners right now. Yeah, Marissa Boone fighting to get inside. It's like Fortman's gonna cut her off and get to that inside lane first. I love the strength we see in Alexa Fortman as she runs, because you see it right there, her driven determination. One minute is what they, these ladies just ran. One minute. Most of us in the stands could not do that in one minute. And they got another lap to go. This is gonna be a great finish on this last lap between Boone and Fortman. I'm not sure Fortman's going to be able to wear out Boone. I think Boone's going to be with her the whole way. I see Fortman using that back stretch to pull ahead just a little bit. In her mind right now, I can only imagine the strength that she has. But does she know that there's another runner coming up from behind? Does she see that girl? And does she know that that's happening right now? And can she kick things on to try and pass things off? Something just happened. I heard a oh. I don't know if she may have gotten cut off. Well, here comes Fortman again on the outside. She's going to kick it in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's Reese Riemann. I just wish people could understand at home and Fortman, the watches. strength and power that is required in order to do what Alexa Fortman has just done again. 210, 209 is somewhere where her total was. 20 minutes ago, she won the 400, and she just came back with a back-to-back -back win to win the 4x800 again. 209.96 with Woodbridge Boone and Woodbridge Riemann coming right behind. You might not see another track athlete with more determination ever than Alexa Fortman. Two years back-to-back, -back, waste no time in getting the gold twice. I am with your defending state champion and repeat state champion in the 400 and the 800, Alexa Fortman of Ottawa Glandorf. Five outdoor state titles. Just what goes through your head when you think about all the accomplishments you've had? I'm just so grateful. I could have done none of this without Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I truly credit him for giving me the gift to run and believe that he's using it all for his glory. Um, the races I do, 4 and 8, are so close and so difficult back to back, but I just rely on his strength to carry me around the track. Today was extra rough with the heat and just had to really dig deep and get everything that I had. In particular, that second race, 
how do you go about preparing to race such close races together, especially for a second year in a row, the 400 and then the 800? Yeah, coming in this year, I knew a little bit what to expect having done it last year and just had to remain confidence and go in with the um, mindset that you have to do whatever it takes to win and you have to truly just leave everything out on that track. So, well, congratulations and thank you so much. Girls 200 meter dash. We're looking at lane two, Sierra Grieber of St. Mary's. Lane six, Jelana Schlenkel of Bryant. And lane nine, Isabel Henderson of Benjamin Logan. Also running in lane one, Reagan Campbell of Licking Valley. Grieber in two, Colette Patty of Johnstown Northridge in three, Emma Henry of St. Clairsville in four, Juliet LaCarente Huber of Marling, Marlington Highland of five, Schlenkel from Bryant in six, Faith Yancey of Circleville in seven, Leela Metris of Hawken in eight, and Henderson is in nine. Jojo Schenkel from Bryan High School already owns the high school record at Bryan. Just a freshman, bright future for her, for her and Gruber from St. Mary's, two-time WBL champion. Juliet in lane five with a pretty cool last name that I can't really pronounce. She is off and going. We've already seen her win several times on the top of the podium. And she is focused again, but take a look at JoJo in lane six. The Brian Runner, the freshman, is pushing her way. Won't get second, but she will get third. And there she is helping up, this is helping the state champion make her way up. 24-23 is the overall time. Let's see what Schlenkel ran. 24-74, that girl's got a future running. Yeah, there Quinte Hubner from Highland, second state title today, had one into hurdles. Would have had the state record, but it was win aided. But how about the job by JoJo Schenkel, Bryan High School, the freshman, jumping up and getting third place. I am with Joanna Schenkel of Bryan, who just took third in the girls' 200. And so how does it feel being able to, as a freshman, not only get to state, not only get on the podium, but come away with a top three finish? It feels really good knowing that I made it this far as a freshman, and we still have three years to go. <laughs> exactly. So what was kind of the motivation coming in today? What was your goal? Was it was it to play top three, or did you kind of exceed your expectations? Uh, the goal was just to make it podium. Didn't really matter about the place, because then again, this is also my first year at state. So knowing that there's several years ahead of me to do better, it really didn't matter as long as I just made it the podium. Thank you for your time and congrats. Thank you. Time now for the boys' 3,200-meter run. You're watching the D2 State Track Final, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts Seamless Spouting. we got several local runners here in this race. Ty Rosengarten from OG, he's number seven. Lanny Oakman from Spencerville, number eight. Owen Scott from Van Wert, number 12. And Tony Stewart from Bell Fountain is 13. Here's the overall group. Marcus Runkle of Fairfield Union, oh, Bennett Turan, oh. Marymont, Nash Minor, Marlington, Huck Finnegan, Shelby, Charles Putnam, Portsmouth, Daniel Kearns, West Jaga, Rosengarten from Otto Glandorf, Oakman from Spencerville, Michael Nichols of Marlington, Ben Shields of St. Clairsville, Brady Tremaine, Jonathan Alder, Scott from Van Wert, Stewart from Blount Fountain, Tucker C. from Heath, Andrew Walton from Fairfield Jesse Union, Owens. Parker Karras from Hawken, Michael Hanselman of Bay, title. and Seth Singer Jesse of Woodbridge. Hey Jennifer, two best and times in this Marcus, Marcus Runkle from Fairfield memory. Union. 9-2446, and take a look also at Charles Putnam with Partsmouth at 9-2-4.81. Our local competitors, Ty Rosengarten at 9-4-5-2-2, he is the best. Oakman from Spencerville, 9-4-8.17. Scott from Van Wert, 9-4-6-1-2. And Stewart from Belfontaine at 9-5-0.49. So this is Spencerville's first year for the boys to be in the D2 race, save our D2 category. They were always in D3 before and uh, from what I understand Spencerville got just like two or three extra guys and it knocked them into D2. That's Ben Shields from St. Clairsville leading the first lap. Ty Rosengarten running quite a bit on the far outside was able to tuck himself in just a little bit before he gets around the curb. That's so important early in the race to get positioning you don't have to lead it but you don't want to get yourself in a position where it's going to be extremely tough to win it. 
The leader is getting quite the lead. The second place runner, a little bit of a lead. And then we've got that big pack. I'm telling you, Miles, the neon track spikes must be the thing this year. I've seen it a lot. And there's basically two colors. It's funny how one athlete will show up with something that the rest will think is cool, and then now suddenly everybody else uh, gets the same type of shoes. Yeah, you need to find something cool because the weather is not cool right now. It is hot here. What did you say, 94 Hit a degrees? high of 94 degrees. Air quality issues also. And who did you say that was running in the lead right there? Look at us, Ben Shields from St. Clairsville. Trying to keep track of our local runners who are in that big pack right there that makes up the big group that's currently vying for third place. Ben Shields has a time of a 925.99 coming into the, the junior, establishing himself early. All right, if you can see that, what I call the third place group out there, you'll see that um, they are starting to spread out just a tad bit. We are not yet to the halfway mark, so we still have a ways to go with this race. And we could also even see some of these guys really scoot their way up towards the first place runner. That's how this race works. All depends on that. what your plan is as a runner. Know your body, know what it's capable of. Formulate your plan, then most importantly, execute it. And we can see that our second place runner's plan right now is to start to make a move past that first place spot. All right, the first place packet now has uh, changed a little bit. We have a big, well, I didn't say a big, but a decent sized group now vying in for that spot in that first place position. Four guys right up there with a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, really now our top group, nine guys who are doing that, currently in, leaded, led rather, led by Owen Scott of Van Wert. That's actually who we've had at the front, nearly from the start. Owen Scott from Van Wert with those uh, braids right there and his hair has now moved into the third place spot. Good to see Van Wert's distance running, doing really well. Yeah, it was Owen Scott that led the early part of this race incorrectly thought it was uh, Ben Shields, but Owen Scott, good job on those first two laps. Let's see if Owen can figure out a way to get back in contention here. Well, you know, I mean, really, when we look at Ben Shields, he had a 925.99, so you would expect him to go out and lead right away. Owen Scott coming with a 946.12. Uh, kudos to him for getting out there, getting out there to the start, leading things for quite a while. He has moved back now for a little bit, but there's still quite a bit of race left to go, and we'll see what happens as things progress on. And those little numbers on the thigh sometimes uh, get tough to see, and there, there's some runners, Jennifer, also that don't have their numbers on. Guys are starting to pick up the pace now. We're at 538, 539, 540. Three laps left to go. Our leader is Bennett Turant from Marymont. Van Wert runner has slipped to ninth place. So if he wants to get on the podium, he needs to move his way up just one spot and then he'll finish in eighth place and make his way to the podium. Let's hope Owen Scott still has some fuel left in that tank. Such a good start for him. Currently six minutes and 27 seconds. 
as we're watching these guys uh, make their way around, getting closer to the end of this race, we just want to make a reminder to you that WOSN is a viewer-supported nonprofit organization supported by your donations. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this production. We do this for the community. That's why we do what we do. Just go to WTLW.com forward slash donate or give us a call at 419-339-4444 and you can make a donation online. Two laps to go. 800 meters left to run. Now you're going to see these guys pick up the pace and start to challenge each other. This also might be the time you see someone take off because we do see that quite a bit. Yeah, all about your plan. Pretty good battle at the top. Really, Jennifer, any of the top four or five runners here still have a shot at this. A uh, new leader now. So if you notice the leader's knees as he's picking up his knees to make his way around, that's a good tactic to do when you get further into a distance race and you start to get tired. You pick up your knees because it automatically helps your stride get to be where you need it to be. As you get tired, the stride is the thing that's so important to be able to keep going in a distance race. And so he's got those knees up, he's striding out long, and he's looking strong as he gets close to one lap to go. But we're already starting to see some sprinting moving from the back end and we're going to see a lot of that now in the last 400. Look at these guys pick up their pace. Miles, I'm always amazed at how much energy they have toward the That's end. Daniel Kearns is our leader. He's being chased by Nash Miner from Marlington. Yeah, Jennifer, good point by you. Don't know where they get this energy. <laughs> you are quite a determined young man to be able to have this in the tank. You know, one of the neat things that you, if you follow grades and athletes, a lot of times you find that your distance runners also have some of your highest grade point averages. I don't know if it's because they have a goal setting mentality. I wonder if they're in for the long haul, but a lot of times you will find that, uh, that distance runners uh, also do a great job in the classroom. I think it's discipline, right? You have to have some self-discipline to, to finish a long run. Well, you have discipline to finish the grades. Finishing strong here. Lots of, oh, look at the second place runner. He's trying so hard to get his way up there towards first place, but it's just not going to happen today. There you go. First, second, third place, and fourth. Kearns from West Jaga, 925.60 is your champion. Marlington's minor is second with a 926.45. Watching, let's watch Ty Rosengarten now. He's gonna pass the Van Wertz runner Owen Scott here at the end to make his way in for the final. Rosengarten a sophomore, Scott also a sophomore. They both have plenty of opportunities to be back. Well, folks, this is it. It's the final race that we will bring you, the final local race from the D2 finals, and it's the girls 4x400 meter relay. Ottawa Glandorf in lane five, coming off of Alexa Fortman's double top wins earlier today. Lane one, it's Huron. Lane two, Beaumont. Lane three, Perkins. Lane four, Woodbridge, currently sits third place in the team title and could win it all with this race today. Lane five, Ottawa Glandorf. Lane six, Valley View. Lane seven, Oakwood. Lane eight, Ontario. And lane nine, CVCA. Woodbridge has your best time, uh, four minutes, .70. Ottawa Glandorf not far behind, four minutes, 0.84. Ottawa Glandorf has already gone sub four earlier in the season. Um, so we do know that they have that capability. And it looks like they, ooh, one, two, three, Jennifer, Perkins. You, you talked about that sub four. I was there that day at the WBL. That was a much different conditions. It was a rain-soaked day, mm -hmm. and they ran extremely well. Well, and that is something to think about because weather conditions can definitely have a real impact on runners' abilities uh, to move. But I see a pretty good running ability moving right now with Ottawa Glandorf in lane five. Strong running there as they make their way around the curve. Strong running also 
from outside in lane eight from Ontario. Ontario with the early lead, but Otto Glandorf in That's a good spot. Olivia Fenbert there. She's got the baton off. And it looks to me like she was the first one to hand off. This is it for these ladies. This is the final race. And for the seniors, obviously, this is the final race for OG. So they definitely have a plan of what they want to do. I'm not sure, you know, they won yesterday in their prelim, but it may not have been exactly the way they wanted. They know what they can accomplish. They have a goal. And right now, they are your leaders. Yeah, credit Fox for getting this OG group off to a good start today. Fembert following suit, doing a good job as well. If you recall yesterday, if you saw our broadcast, Otto Glandorf actually handed off the baton to Alexa Fortman in fifth place. And she basically around fourth place that she got that baton, moved her way to first place, but she had a task. Right now, these ladies are in the top spot. You know, still sub two on the exchange. Oh, that's great. Sub two on the exchange. These ladies got some great splits going. Increasing that lead right now, preparing for Ottawa Glandorf's Alexa Fortman to take the baton and do what Alexa does. Yeah, you wonder a little bit what's going through Alexa Fortman's mind. Last time she's going to be carrying the baton for Ottawa Glandor. Knowing her, she's focused on the task at hand. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. There's been many times that Alexa's got that baton and she's moved her way up. But these ladies right now blazing their way into first place. Now the second place challenger as her woman on her heels. She is watching, she's going after her, but wow. I think these ladies prepared, they had a plan, and here goes your 400 meter state champion, two time state champion, just took the baton for her final high school race of her high school career. I should say of her high school career here. I think these ladies might be running at nationals from what I understand. Fantastic. That could be happening a little later, but off she goes, getting ready to go to the back stretch. Got some other great uh, anchors here running behind her. She does need to keep going. But what am I saying? It's Alexa. We know what Alexa does in this back half of this race. Uh, she's going to have to get going quick, Sim, because Woodridge is making an effort to take first away from OG. Uh, you see Fortman realize it, kicks it in. It's Woodridge. And it's OG, it's OG, Alexa Fortman bringing her team home for another state championship, 356, a phenomenal time. Congratulations to the Ottawa Glandorf Titan. What a group of ladies. Uh, the foursome on the four by four, Titanic for the Titans, absolutely at their best when they need to be another state title. We've had such a great time covering Ottawa Glandorf, Van Wert, Bell Fountain, St. Mary's, uh, uh, Liberty Benton, all of these wonderful D2 teams. What a great day, huh, Miles? Oh, where else would you rather be, Jennifer, than right here? What a beautiful day. What a great time watching the state's best. And how about Alexa Fortman and the ladies from OG? What an honor it has been to be able to cover her these past few years. We certainly look forward to watching what she does next at the college level. And all the interviews we've had with her, a class act of a lady who uh, just wants to do the right things for God every moment of her life. 356, 97 is the official time for Ottawa Glandorf, your champions in the four by 400 meter relay. And that's it for us. We have had a full day of racing and we are so thankful that you have joined us for it as well. What an enjoyable day it has been. Want to tell you about all of the crew that has been with us all throughout the weekend. Abby Beck, Cassidy Driscoll, Grace Beck, Jack McGuire, Megan Sherrick, Jacob O'Neill, Nick Fraley, Miles Holiday. Yesterday we had Danny Holbrook. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks so much for watching Division II State Track Finals from the Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. You can only catch it right here on your own WOSN.
I am with your state champion, Ottawa Glandorf girls. They just took the title in the four by 400. Ladies, I'd like you to say your first and last name for me. What grade you're in? Avery Fox, sophomore. Olivia Thumbert, senior. Alexa Fortman, senior. Corinne Clausen, junior. Great, and so you guys finished eighth last year. What is it like being able to not only come all the way back and maybe take a top three finish, but take the whole thing after only placing eighth last year? I think that um, getting eighth last year, I think we definitely knew we had more potential and to come out here today and to show everyone that we had the potential and use it all that. I think that we were all just kind of power hungry. We knew we had a chance and so we all, we just took it. And making a jump like that, what kind of effort, what kind of work and motivation goes into making that jump? I think on like the daily practice, we all know that, um, like Alexa, it's kind of special because we know what the state competition will be like. So to kind of chase after her at every practice, like it really gets you up and like opens your eyes that that's the state competition right there. So you have to really push and drive at every practice. So I think that we all did that this season and that's what set us apart. Well, congratulations and thank you so much.